A paz do Senhor, irmãos. Peace of the Lord, my brother. How good that the church is full today. Glory to God for this. I'd like to invite the church to stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord. We're going to read Revelations 8. Revelations 8, 12. I'm going to read and you will repeat. Amen. I want to hear repeating very loud. And the fourth angel Then the fourth angel sounded and the third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine. And likewise the night. Revelations 8, 12. The children are going to close their eyes and ask for blessing. Lord, bless your children, intermediary, and the lessons. Bless your people this day so that we may this day live with the assurance of salvation and the assurance that you are very close to us and so that we may leave this place already prepared for this meeting with the Lord. We pray to you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We have already had two classes. Pay attention, because I'm going to ask questions, and you already know the answers. If you are not pay attention, you're going to you're not going to be able to remember the answers. So the first class was about the first trumpet. Has everybody remembered? First class was about the first trumpet. The second class was about the second and the third trumpet. And today we're going to study about the fourth trumpet. But why are we studying about all of this? That's why we need to leave this place knowing about. Every children intermediary and adolescent need to leave this place knowing what those trumpets mean to us. Amen. But now I'm going to ask a question to the children. Did Jesus come to the world too? Why Jesus came to the world? To save us. Very well. Jesus came to the world to save us. But now the intermediary. How did Jesus save us? What did he do to save us? You can say? Do we have a microphone? Nicholas. Give the microphone to her. Dying for us. Dying for us. Very well. Glory to God. Jesus died on the cross for us. Now I'm going to ask the adolescents. Is Jesus dead today? What? No. What happened to Jesus? You can answer Nicholas on the microphone. He resurrected. Jesus resurrected. And he is he's alive. Amen. Glory to God. 
And now, I want to know who is going to answer this one. Jesus went to heaven after he resurrected, but he made a promise. What was that promise? Give me the microphone, please, Nicholas. Give it to her. That he was going to take us to be with him in eternity. He promised that he was going to take us. That he was going to come. He promised that he was going to come to take us. And we are going to learn today when Jesus comes to take us. Because we need to know this, right? Jesus cannot just come and we not be prepared, right? We want to be prepared so that we can go with him to eternity, right? So today we're going to study about the fourth class, which is about the fourth trumpet. In fact, there are seven trumpets. But until the fourth trumpet, the church will be here. But after the fourth trumpet, we are not going to be here. That's what we need to know which ones are those trumpets and how they happen because they are a sign. We are not going to hear the sound of a trumpet being blown. We are going to see the signs and we will know, oh, this is the first trumpet. Oh, this is the second trumpet. Oh, now this is the fourth, the, the third, and now we are waiting for the fourth. We need to understand those signs. Amen. So let's go through the slides. On the text there before Jesus, the word says, Then the fourth angel blown the trumpet. So what happened? And the third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So you need to pay attention. There's a fourth trumpet. Now you're going to see the signs of the first trumpet. What happened to the first trumpet? 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 The trees were burnt. Very well. The Lord said that when, when we... The, the third part of the trees of the green... Look there. No, no, no. Why do we know that this happened? Do we know that this happened? Of course we do. And why do we know that this happened? Many things. We know on, on the TV every day. This week also, we, there has been a great fire in one of the states in the United States. Who knows? Who has watched the TV? California, right? There is a forest fire. But this, the third part had, has already been destroyed a long time ago. When the, because when the trees are destroyed, destroyed, many things happen to the planet. There are many floods. Because the trees, they hold on to the ground and prevent the ground from moving. So then the waters follow their own course. But when there are many floodings, it is because they removed all the trees and that's what happens. There is nothing to hold on to the ground. So the rivers uh, go out of their own course and many things happen. The overheating of the planet that the fires cause. Today we live in a world very hot. We always hear in schools of, of, over about the overheating of the planet and that the ice caps are melting, melting. We are really feeling the heat. This is a sign that this prophecy has already been fulfilled. 
So when we see this, and we know, oh, this is the first sign, the first trumpet. We have another trumpet. That's the second trumpet. Who knows what is the second trumpet? Who knows what is the second trumpet? No. The fish is dying. The animals also died. Only the children know this? So the, when the third part, what is the third part? Is it, is this, if you divide the world in three parts or if you cut the pizza, uh, the pizza in three parts, so then one, one part was vanished. Just so you understand the quantity of what happened. Do we know that this really happened? Of course we, we can see it. How do we see it? You can see On the internet. Yeah, on the internet. We see this every day. The fishermen, they have a hard time trying to fish because there is not enough fish. There are many fish that have, have been going extinct. You see on the aquariums, you see the ones that are going extinct. So all of this is happening. There are catastrophes that happen of uh, oil spills on the oceans, and you see so many animals there die. Has it already happened? Yes. And it continues to happen every day, right? So when you see on the newspapers, when you see they, the teachers teaching on schools, uh, how to take care of the environment, and then you remember, oh, this is the second trumpet. Is this second? Is the second trumpet? It has already sounded. And how about the third trumpet? Who knows what is the third trumpet? You cannot drink water. Oh, very well. The water got bitter. The adolescents and adults? No, no, no. The waters got bitter and you cannot drink anymore. The waters are dirty. And the, pe the fish died and people tried to fish them. So then they they can't fish them because they're already dead. Very well. So the second and third trumpets, everybody learned. So, so the water is bitter, right? So we can no longer drink water. Every city has a center where they treat the water so that we can drink. If we drink the water the way it is, what is going to happen to us? We're going to, we're going to die or get sick. And there are many diseases in the water. Not even the fish that live there are able to live in the water. They all die because of the pollution. Can I answer that, Manuele? If you drink this water, you are going to die, <laughs> really die. <laughs> You're going to get sick and die. Because the water is not good anymore. Has the prophecy of the Lord been fulfilled? Has the prophecy of the Lord been fulfilled? Yes. Well, I don't, I'm not sure if everybody knows. Has the prophecy of the Lord been fulfilled? Yes. Which one was this trumpet? The third. The third trumpet. And now, now comes the fourth. Who can remember the fourth trumpet? Now, did you raise your hand? You can bring the Tia Lucia. Bring the, the microphone to him. You know what the fourth trumpet is? The, shine, the sky is not going to shine anymore. And Jesus is going to come to take us. Go to God. We just read. Right? The sky is not going to shine anymore. The sun, the moon, or the stars. And Jesus is going to come to take us. Go to God for this. Right? Right? 
and the water are dirty, we cannot drink it. We cannot drink water without fit it. So let's go to the second, to the next slide. This is the fourth trumpet. Look there. Jesus promised that he's going to come to take us. On the when the fourth trumpet is sounded, Jesus said, I will return to take you. And look, the three trumpets had ar have already sounded. The fourth is Jesus returning to take us. So we need to be prepared for this meeting with Jesus. Before Jesus went to heaven, he used to have long conversations with the apostles. And the apostles began to ask him, But Jesus, when are you coming to take us? And what was his answer? Jesus said, When you see the signs, when you see the signs, I am at the door. I will be at the door. So then he gave the signs so that we would understand when he would come to return to take us. Why? Why did, the, did Jesus give the signs? Because he wants all his people to live with him in eternity. He wants us to be prepared. This is the time that the Lord gave us to get ready to be with him in eternity. Because he loves us. As he wants each one of us to live with him in this wonderful place that he's prepare, preparing for us. If we find this land beautiful, imagine what is going to happen in eternity. Because there, there's not going to be anything bad, but only the glory of God, only joy, happiness, streets of gold, mansions for everyone. It's a wonderful place. When we understand this, the desire of our heart is only one what it is to live in this place with God but there is a price it's not just anyone that can live there are the ones who accept the Lord as their Savior they understand that he died to save us amen and now there is another question in what day Jesus will come to take us the word says that not even the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but only the Father knows when Jesus will return. So no one knows the day. Only the Father who is in heaven. That's why the signs are so important. Because the signs, they show us that is time for Jesus to return. All the signs have already been fulfilled, and so the day is coming. Paul, the apostle from the Lord, he wrote uh, a text in Corinthians. Can you put in a projection, please? Even, especially for those who can't read Portuguese. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet that will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptibly, and we shall be changed. So, it's going to be quick. Have, have you tried to blink? You, see if, how many numbers you can count when you blink. How many can you count? When you blink. Tell me. What? Alice answered. Can you count? No. 
No. Why? Because on the blink of an eye, it's very fast. So that's why it's going to be a return of the Lord. It's going to be quick. It's going to be on the blink of an eye. And that's why we need to be paying attention. Because there's not going to be time when, Je because when Jesus returns. If Jesus returns, you're not prepared. Remember of the ten virgins? The parable of the ten virgins? Five. Yesterday, we had a message once again speaking about the parable. Five were prepared and five were not. Only five went to the wedding and that's what's going to happen. The ones who were prepared are going and the ones who are not prepared are not. But the Lord wants all of us to be prepared for this meeting. Because it's going to be, it's going to be and fast in the blinking of an eye, twink of an eye. Amen. So look, look there. The sound of the fourth trumpet, the church will be raptured. The rapture is going to be very quick in the twink of an eye. So now there are, we have two questions. When is it going to happen? No one knows. How is it going to happen? It's going to be on a blinking of an eye. You know. Very well. So, the word has already said what he already told, the word has already told us that the moon, the sun, and the stars, the third parts are going to shine. We're not going to be here to see this. The Lord ha will be has a, will have already taken have already taken us. The f the f the uh, up to the third trumpet. The judgment is going to be upon the nature, but the fourth judgment is going to be up, uh, against man. But the Lord doesn't want us to go through this trial and this difficulty. So He's going to take His church before this judgment to come upon man. That's why the fourth trumpet is about to sound. We need it is time for us to leave this world because the project of the Lord for this church has already been fulfilled. Very soon the fourth trumpet will sound. The Lord fulfills all the, his promises. God fulfills all his promises. So when we depart and when we look uh, at a tree out there, and uh, what are we going to remember? Jesus is returning. We are going to remember of the trumpets. And when we go to the beach to look at the ocean, what are we going to remember? Jesus is returning. What is, what is it? Caleb? Oh, the trumpets. We are going to remember about the trumpets. When we drink a glass of water at home, what are we going to remember about? We are going to remember the trumpets. What are the trumpets warning us about? Jesus is returning. The world out there, the nature, is warning us. Jesus is returning. And this is our shout, the cry of the church. What does the church proclaim to the world? What Maranatha means? What Maranatha means? You can answer, Caleb. Jesus comes. So let us all say together, what is our child? Jesus comes. Maranatha. And many people out there don't know. They look at what happens on nature, they get worried. The scientists are studying how are going to do to fix up the world. What each person has to do as a good servant, we need to take care of what God created. But we know that this is not all. What is going to happen is that we are going to leave this world and we are going to live with God there in eternity. Glory to God. Amen. So now the question. Look at our shout. The Lord Jesus comes. So now what is the question? Look at the question. Why do we know that the rapture is going to be fast? Why do we know? You can answer. Because it's going to be like a blink of an eye. Blink of an eye is very fast. 
because it's going to be in a blinking of an eye. Very well. Amen. Glory to God. Because it's going to be in a blink of an eye. Amen. You can answer. Jesus will return to take us. So the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? If you are not, now leave this place prepared. Because it can be at the moment in which we leave there, the door. Maybe when we sing the last song, Jesus may return and take us. And we rejoice because this is going to be the best day in our lives. Amen? So let us stand up to sing this song. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Now, are we ready to begin the Sunday school? Okay, so the church may be seated. The children that will receive the class are going to do their homework. They can go to the class already. And we're going to begin our Sunday school. A Igreja Cristã Maranata está presente em nações de todos os continentes do planeta. Igrejas de países nas três Américas. The three Americas, Europe, Asia, and Oceania, connected by the same doctrine, by the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, and united by the living Word. Brethren from every part of the world participate on the same service, jointly, on the same body, and in the same spirit. Through the 
Eastern tradition, the members of Maranatha Christian Church of the entire planet live a moment of unity and fellowship like the Hebrews who lived in the departure from Egypt and, and the disciples with the Lord Jesus before his death on the cross of Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the eternal gospel and by the message of the soon return of the Lord Jesus. We greet every, all the brethren that are in the church receiving this transmission with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our brethren, we are here transmitting the Sunday school, the church Maranatha. We do this every Sunday in the morning around this time, transmitting to all our churches. And today, here are with, to, with us are our brethren from the church of Boa Vista and also from Cristóvão Colombo. And, uh, town of Vila Velha and the state of Espiritu Santo, the brethren are participating with us in the preparation of this Sunday School. Our events of this week, beginning with the ones that have already happened abroad, we're going to inform to the brethren in uh, Guinea-Bissau and the uh, uh, western part of Africa. The brethren are there in Guinea-Bissau. They are elaborating, participating in the Sunday School. And they are also utilizing the transmission of the Sunday School straight from Brazil here. We greet our brethren from Guinea-Bissau, Brother Tadeu, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. And we are also the church also from the work that is being done there at the Sunday School. The work with the children intermediary in the lessons as it's been done in this month of October. And there uh, our brethren from Spain and the region of Barcelona, the uh, Church of Granogis. And they're participating on this work with the children in the Sunday School. We also want to highlight abroad the assistance that is being given to the church in Peru, in South America, in Peru. The work has been done in a couple of cities, like the cities of Troijo, also Casa Grande, Huariaca, and also Tarapoto. Our brethren there are participating on this work there with the help of pastors and the assistance from Brazil uh, from this, uh, on this country. And I also want to inform the brethren that in, with regards to the world event that is being prepared, and the preparation that is being made for the transmission of the service that is going to be transmitted to all our churches, and church linked to us all around the planet on the this coming November 24th. There's a group of volunteers that are on Manaí already working on the sense of preparing the location for the transmission of this great event, which is going to happen the November 24th. So now we got the seminars throughout this week. There is a highlight for the seminars that have taking place in many places in Brazil, and amongst them, the Maranhão of Queluz, in the region of the Rio de Janeiro, 
they were celebrating 20 years of existence ever since it was consecrated this place of uh, seminars and also this region of, of Barreiras in the state of Bahia the brethren had a seminar that was followed by a, a great evangelization that was made at night after the seminar the city of João Neiva and the state of Espírito Santo there was a seminar all in Brazil there was a seminar with more than a thousand participants there was a great important event there and to each one of those three seminars there was a class that was transmitted live straight from our center of transmission by Pastor Jadouti that sent there to those three seminars a study, a class that was given in each one of those three seminars. There's also a, a seminar that is important, a, a seminar that happened with a sign language that happened in the northeast of Brazil, in Maceió, in Brazil, the capital of the state of Alagoas. The seminar that was that happened there for the brethren that work with with Brazilian language, Brazilian sign language. There are other events there were highlighted. It was a, a special service of celebration of 12 years of the shared faiths in, in the state of Bahia, a money that has had great prosperity with the number number of people. The work has grown greatly in this money. So it was there the 12 year birth uh, anniversary in the state of Bahia. And also there was a consecration to the Maranatha Christian Church of Itacurusa, Itacurusa in Rio de Janeiro, in the state of Rio de Janeiro. And it was a great highlight of this week. And there was also a chapter glorification for the women in São Marcos, Salvador, in the state of Bahia. It was another event of this week. There was also a vigil of the youth as preparation for the evangelization of the Manaim of Guarapari, the group of youth in Guarapari, in the state of Espírito Santo, where the brethren were prepared for the evangelization through this vigil. Now, the work with the two intermediate adolescents was a highlight of this week, where you can highlight the work that was made in Cariacica, in the state of Espírito Santo in Brazil, and also in Curitiba, in the state of Paraná, a group of children going out for the evangelization on the streets, and also Guaratinga in the state of Bahia, and in Guarulhos in the state of São Paulo, the evangelization and was uh, uh, sing along on the streets, and at the end, uh, the state of Valadares, Minas Gerais, where they did a work in a school on that region of Governador Valadares. The evangelization was, they were also highlight of this week, beginning with the uh, eighth Amazon mission in the state of Amazon, where yesterday night a service was done in a church in the city of Belém, in the state of Pará. And this morning, the brand went uh, to Belgas, in the state of Pará, in the region of Amazon. Eastern Amazon, and also in Brasilia, there's a great highlight of evangelization in the federal district, the capital of Brazil, and also Duque Barcelá, city of Maranhão, in Brazil, and they had a sister from the brethren from the state of Piauí. It was a great uh, evangelization. And also in region and area, the city in the state of region and area, the city of Governador, in São Maricá, in region and area. In the northeast, in Natal, in the northeast of uh, in Rio Grande do Norte state in Brazil, and, and also Dom Eliseu in the state of Pará in Brazil. There was another work evangelization. Uh, there was a highlight, and also in Boa Vista in the state of Roraima, in the extreme north of the country, uh, was uh, another evangelization. There were uh, baptisms. Yeah, throughout this week and uh, highlight what the Lord has done in, and and is working in regards to salvation lives we had in Brasilia and also a part of the sadness city and state of Minas Gerais and the area of Terra, Terra Vermelha near us in the city of uh, Vila Velha in the state of Espiritu Sun. So those were the highlight of the work uh, have been done this week. The work of the Lord never stops and his servants are, are walking for the honor and glory of the Lord 
uh, of our Lord. And so now let us give continuity to the study, biblical study that is related to the prophetic moment that the church is living in this last hour, based on the parable of Matthew, Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins. We are going to uh, have an introductory word with Pastor Gilucci. I like to. I uh, like to greet all the brethren with the peace of the Lord. We're well, going to give continuity to what we have already done at this time in our Sunday schools. We have pastors here present cooperating on this Sunday school. I'd like to tell the brethren we've fallen. The topic that is being uh, taken on here is related to the prophetic moment in which the church is living. We know very well of a story, which is the story of Christianity, from its first day of existence, when there was the sign, was the foundation for the beginning of the church through the Pentecosts, which was the pouring out of the Holy Spirit to establish the church. This was the first project that was determined so that the church would take on this, its stand in the world as a representative of a project of eternity. So the church, in a fundamental way, had and will have this responsibility, which is to say to the world that there is an eternal life and that man is not alone, that man has not been forsaken. Everything was created and it is available to us, all the beauties in the world, but at the same time, as the Holy Spirit was poured out so that this church would be established in the world. Now, we live in a period at the end of 2,000 years of the church where the church is getting ready for its departure. Whether man likes it or not, is ready for it or not, the promise of the Lord Jesus is standing. And Peter, in its uh, prophetic sermon, to the kingdom of the Lord, fulfilling the promise of the Lord, Jesus said the following, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. He was not going to give one key, he gave several keys. Which ones were the keys? The two great messages where 3,000 and 5,000 were converted. So the kingdom was opened up there. Jewish that even had crucified Jesus, they were touched by the Holy Spirit to understand that Jesus had resurrected from amongst the dead. So that was the great project that began, this project that began in this period from the Pentecostes. So today, what do we have? We have a church with 2,000 years of existence and a promise that he made on his departure. Oh, the church will depart. The world is not going to end. The church will depart. And the ones who have been called for this kingdom, they will be removed. A few went before of us. It's been 2,000 years of Christians, servants of God, faithful Christians to the Lord. They went to eternity. But now, it is a new period. It is a period in which there is a concern, observe, the Bible has a concern that is fundamental over its prophetic aspect. We're going to find in the Old Testament before Jesus and in the New Testament from Jesus forward and including in the parables that were uttered by the Lord Jesus. They are related 
to many moments, but specifically to this time of the rapture of the church, when uh, the church is getting ready for its departure. What was the promise, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and the first time of the church, now the test text says on the speech of Peter first was the pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the Pentecost so now the great and terrible the Lord is coming great for the ones who are waiting for the Lord and terrible for the ones who despise the project this is prophetic so the Bible is concerned fundamentally with this prophetic aspect. There are people that like the Bible and they even read it. There are many stories there. But what is important is what is prophetic, is what the Bible wants to say that only Holy Spirit is able to reveal because this comes from eternity. So the time in which we are living is this. We have a name. Uh, our denomination has a name. Maranatha Christian Church is a new church, a new denomination. No, it's not a new religion. It is an emphasis for the moment in which we are living. So with this name, Maranatha, we are saying the Lord is coming. Others that have other names, they give emphasis to their names. And we give emphasis to this name by which we have been called and we are uh, t giving account to that the Lord Jesus is coming. But saying that the Lord Jesus is coming, everybody's saying, I can't say, of course. But now, the way, the way in which you, you need to say this is not saying, oh, Jesus is coming. You know, be careful. We are gonna go, not going to go to heaven. We never say that. Our concern is, is, a, is a shout, is an alert, is a warning without imposing anything to anyone. Whoever hears, so then you take the parable who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Who has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. It's not what I'm saying, because what I'm saying, anybody can say, there's nothing wrong with that. But it is what the Holy Spirit is saying to each one. You may say, my brother and sister, or, or the neighbor or visitor, whoever is in the church, he, he doesn't care about what I'm saying. Uh, wow, well, I need to take care of my own life, of course. You need to be listening to the Word in order to make your own decisions. Each person will give account of themselves to the Lord. So, look at the parable of the virgins. The wise ones had the oil and the foolish didn't. So, give us of your oil. So, then the wise ones said, no. If I give to you, I will be lacking oil for myself so no one saves anybody else so the mom it is time for each one to look for the necessary element which is the oil to keep their lamps lit because the meeting now with the groom the feast is, is about to happen I like to highlight this everybody likes feast the feast of this wedding is relating to the marriage of the virgins that have been called. The beauty of this feast is the lamp lit, is, is the light lit. Because the groom is coming at the last moment in the past. Today, the bride comes for last, but in the past, the groom came for last. So everybody would come to the house to wait for the groom. And he could arrive at any moment, but the groom that was, had a lot of money, he came at the last minute. So why would he come at the last hour? Because it was the darkest hour, and the lamps were the ones who lit. So the darkest was the night, the, the brighter the lamps would light. So that's the beauty. So the groom was outside. He was in a higher place. He would be in a high place, and he would look at the house because the marriage was happening. And they would see people, he would see people with their lamps. The beauty of the feast for the groom was this, to see the lamps lighting the environment of the marriage, the, where the marriage was going to take place. Because midnight, if everybody was, had their lamps off, the groom would have no joy 
to see everything dark. He wanted to see that the lamps, that the house would be lit. And more than that, because the houses had uh, hills and people would go up and down and there were berries that they, they used to put, they put berries there. Oh, they would have they put trees there. It was their tradition. It was beautiful from whoever was uh, on outside and the groom was on outside. So when was the darkest? That's when he arrived. So this is the darkest time. So we're leaving the end of a prophetic day, which is called a time, a prophetic time. The night is out there. Nobody sees anything. We are telling everyone. Everybody knows. So the dark cloud that has taken over the world and the minds is the night. The man has come to a situation, the most deplorable situation, morally. Ethical, and religious, because man has no place to go. They are all in the darkness. Everyone, the darkness has has taken over the world. That's why, observe, Jesus refers to this moment and uses a parable for this moment. All the parables, he speaks also in all the parables, but he was not concerned about saying the other parables that. We needed the oil and the fire, not in the others, but in fact, I would like to tell the brethren from Bahia, a pastor that is there, Pastor Valdemir from Bahia, he stayed in, in Brazil. You made a request, and I'm going to answer it to you right now that you want a participation of one of your participation the next Sunday school. I always say seminar instead of Sunday school because I'm used to seminars. But pastor, tell your youth there on your church, first of our joy of knowing that you are so interested in, in participating on this prophetic moment. And in second place, I'm going to give you the homework, but I'm going to send you a couple of instructions and guidelines so that you may be able to follow up. In fact, I'm going to put on the on the website of Presbytery a conversation that I had with the group that was gathered here, the brethren from Boa Vista here in São Cristóvão, in the state of the Spirit Santo Brazil, and a couple of pastors that were present. I'm going to send a couple of details that are important so that you can take into account. So the text for you and for whoever wants is in Matthew, Matthew 22, verse Matthew 22, from verse 1 to 14. I want you, Valdemir, to make a difference, to begin, because the parable of the Virgin, and this parable here, in which Jesus speaks of a man that entered into the feast, but he didn't have the wedding garments. The king came and saw a man that didn't have the proper attire, and he what did he say? What did he speak to the ones who were there? He gave a recommendation. And what, I want to know what is the difference when he spoke on this parable on Matthew 22 and when he speaks about the parable of the virgins. What was the time? And what time he speaks when he is referring to the parable of the virgins? What prophetic moment was? And which one was this prophetic moment in which he speaks on? chapter 22 from verse 1 to 14 so pastor here's your homework so now going back to let's summarize we're taking a little longer I'm, I'm abusing a little bit about the time but the answer the questions are going to come out very quick I know that the brethren want this but a, a few have written to me and I picked up a couple of topics here this is this brother here from Luis Fernando Loreiro in Tapuã in Brazil, uh, he says, he's pointing out that for the preparation, you need to he have a reservoir. Reservoir is not only seeking and receiving a blessing, no, it's to continue in fellowship. So it is in fellowship that you are able to achieve a blessing. So now he shows this detail, and not only this, he says, preparation for the world. So, very good. So, the church is before the world. 
the feast of, of the bride there, where the the owner of the house was, who's the father of the owner of that feast, had had his own characteristics. The city was small; people came from afar. And they had to identify it with the garments that he would give. It was not the garments that would come with from the world with their own money. No, it was was a gift from the Father. Salvation is a gift from the Father that the Father gives us. It's not what you can get from through human effort. That is not necessary. The Father has the garments of salvation. Well, he wanted two things. First, first of all, the ones who, that were coming to the wedding and they walked through the city, they would say, oh, there is going to be a feast. And the man who is going to uh, is offering the feast is rich. So the father, the one who is offering the feast is rich, and the world that is out there will be able to identify the faithful church. Doesn't matter whether you're Christian or evangelical, that's not important. He wants to know where is the faithfulness. So a garment of virtue. What is what is this garment? It's so different. They change their lives. They left their addictions. Many times the gospel does to it. It's a new birth. It's an identification. They have a new garment compared to the world. They are not better than the ones who are around them. But they are more responsible because they need to be identified. And the second identification is now before the groom. The first one was before the world and now before the Father. Very well, the garment is uh, they are here. Uh, you, you brought the lamp, you brought the oil. And the revelation is here without revelation, without the oil. What did he, he point out here? This brother is very interesting. He said that the foolish versions, they forgot to get ready. They went to another direction. But we are using what the brethren are sending here, these contributions. We have here Malo, o Petino, that also, he's from Valadares, Minas Gerais, in Brazil. He makes an observation about the plagues of Egypt. In fact, the topic that we uh, spoke about on the World Supper of the Lord that we had a while ago. The plagues that came to Egypt was to make the people of Israel aware that the Lord was preparing the Lord was present and that he was going to take the Jewish people from the cross of Egypt from the hands of Pharaoh and that's why they needed to be ready so now this time the revelation the power of the Lord is being the signs the critical signs that we see out there they're all signs so that the church would get ready because now is arriving the time of the church departure so now Israel, when Israel saw all the plagues at midnight, I will pass in Israel through the midst of Egypt and I'm going to hurt the firstborn of the ones who don't have a sign of the blood. That's where we're speaking about the power of the blood Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit. It's not a blood of animal. There was the blood of the Lamb prophetically in the Old Testament. As the blood was the blood of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the life it was in it in him. So this understand, this understand that church is having at uh, this last hour. So see, my brethren, I'm referring here to the work of uh, Brother Marlon in Valadares. We also have a work there. We also have a, a bunch of complaints here <laughs> of any other aspects here from Pablo on the in Belo Horizonte, also in Minas Gerais. Has an amazing work that he has done. I'm not even going to read here because at the end of the day. Oh, and they end up uh, going too far away from the top topic of the Sunday school. So also Carlos Henrique from Belo Horizonte, he made a, an amazing contribution. He points out that the foolish versions, he didn't go against the, uh, towards the foolish versions, they didn't go towards the groom, he went to the other direction. Uh, also to to speak about the participation of a, a child. She's an adolescent, actually. Annalisa from Catanópolis, in Paraná, in Brazil. 
And what called my attention was that she made a description, complete description, perfect description, applying the parable of the virgins to our lives. Uh, I want to send my greeting to this uh, the last night. She's actually, no, she's five years old. She's not on the last night. She's a child. We're more than, we, the, the ones who are over 30, you know, we need to understand this and highlight this. Now, Jules, I'm going to give a little time for you, Jules. But I also like to refer to a friend that I have in Brazil. She, every year she has another birthday. Elza, you are in my heart. I'll send you my greeting. Elza, you're in Brazil. You're in the center of everything that is in the world here in Brazil, in the capital of Brazil. And now, Gilson. Now we have the word. Amen, my brethren. So let us go to the first question. The brethren need to observe here. And we need to see here, observe very well. The content of the question is said the following. Going back to the topic of the Sunday school of last Sunday, we're going to re remember uh, about the parable that is in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter five, 25, verse 1 to 12. So now, our task is going to be using two words, mention the reasons or the main topics uses, used by the Lord Jesus in his parables. Parables, generally speaking, including this one in Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 12. So, in two words, the brethren are going to identify all our mention, the reason, reasons or main topics that the Lord Jesus always used when he spoke a parable. So, those are only two words is an answer that the brethren naturally will find out going over the text and the parables of the Lord Jesus. Only two words to answer this first question. So let's wait. So do the brethren know the, the parables? We're going to give one minute for the brethren to answer. Using two words, you're going to reason the topics and reasons why Jesus used. Why did he use a parable? Why did Jesus use a parable a parable is a story with the participation of one of the sisters she's participating on the Sunday school this morning she's going to answer so, so a passage of that uh, it's one of the words that contributed for this study are the historical and prophetic. Every Bible has a story, but also has a prophecy. So those are the two words that the Lord Jesus used as a historical and prophetic character of the words that the Lord has always used. He would tell a story, but behind it, it had a prophetic character of the parable. So this is going to be clearer to the brethren on the second question, because it is related to the first one. So let's go to the second question to make easier your understanding regarding the first question. So the second question is identified on the parable of the ten virgins, the, as the historical aspects and prophetic aspects over which the Lord Jesus tried to alert his church. So now we understand the historical and the prophetic. And now we're going to mention these two aspects in which the Lord Jesus tried to alert his church. So now let us wait for this answer. We're going to have a minute for the brand to answer. So the brand are going to identify with, his own, with their own words what is the prophetic uh, historical aspect of this parable of Matthew 25. So what is the prophetic aspect? Is this a subjective answer the brand can use with their own words? The brand can use. The parable of the ten convergence so the church can participate. So the marri marriage of? So what did the Lord want to say with the parable? For the, and the cultural side of the... Uh, what is the as prophetic aspect? So the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of Jesus with the church. So if you pick up the story of David, Abram, or any other 
He's going to see a story, and then there's a prophetic aspect for our lives. So he's going to offer this help. So we have a historic aspect, which is marriage. So a church from Boa Vista Três, with Pastor Daniel Monteiro. A historic aspect is regarding to the surprise with the time of the night regarding the, the virgins, the, the ten virgins, actually of the five foolish virgins. The prophetic aspect is regarding the alert of the Lord Jesus for the meeting with Jesus, with his groom, with his bride, who is the faithful church. Amen. Is that it? And the brethren from the church confirm. So what is the historic aspect that Jesus told regarding the feast of a marriage where the father of the groom invites a couple of people to the feast and the great surprise which is the time so the bread now can see on the screen for the bread in the church the surprise and also the time of the night so this is a historical aspect which was as it was mentioned by the Lord Jesus so I'd like to clarify here historical is very clear the feast a marriage in which the father of the groom invited a couple of people for the feast. This is the historical. And surprise is the time of the night. It's something else. And the prophetic is, which is important, which is an alert for the special time as it was here, for the special time where it will take place the meeting, which, which is the marriage. It is the prophetic, speaking about the moment of the rapture of the church where the Lord Jesus is with his bride, which is the church. So now pay attention. The question that Pastor Jesus made, which was, where is the historical and the prophetic in the parable? Observe one interesting thing, so that the parable is the way in which the Lord Jesus used to communicate with any person. So the word of the Lord had secrets that would only be revealed by the Holy Spirit. So the historic was pretty clear here. The history of a man that was rich, that invited a group of people, it was a feast. Anybody can mention about the historical part. But what happened here, which is the prophetic, which is con contained in this, that's what is important. Speaking about time, is speaking about a marriage, which is the meeting with the Lord Jesus and the church. The church is the bride. Jesus is the groom, the father of the, the groom is the Lord Jesus, uh, is uh, God the Father, and the oil and the light is the Holy Spirit. There is a series of things that are not contained here. This is the revealed word, and what is contained in the parable. Don't ever forget from this moment forward, every time you open the Bible, look for two things, the historical and the prophetical. The historical is a need, in, this need you need to have to know the Bible, you need to know. The prophetic is what is hidden. The historical, the human reason works, is a story that you can tell according to your own human reason. But the prophetic, no. The prophetic is only through revelation. One comes through human reason, and the other comes from revelation. One comes from the ground from here where we are and the other comes from heaven Bible without revelation is a lamp without oil and a lamp that is not lit you don't see the path you don't know where you are Jesus I'm sorry for the intervention I'd like to also to remind that this alert is for the church and the faith of church it is important to remind you and now let's go to the third question the third question is the following prophetically speaking the parable refers to two thirds church and one faithful church and one unfaithful church. So the question is the following in the Gospel of Matthew chapter twenty five verse from one to twelve, where is the unfaithful church in the parable of the virgins of the ten virgins? So where is the unfaithful church? How can we identify the unfaithful church in the parable of the ten virgins? Uh, of Matthew twenty five verse and verses 1 to 12. So, here's the question. The brethren are going to be working on and examining the text of the word so that you may find answer. Prophetically speaking, prophetically, the word refers to two churches, one faithful and the other unfaithful. 
the prudent and the the wise and the foolish one. In Matthew 25, verse 1 to 12, where is the unfaithful church? How can we identify the unfaithful church in this parable? So the we're not working on the text to identify this answer. They didn't have the responsibility with their own salvation because they disobeyed with we are going to have our help with the bread and participate with us for the preparation of this Sunday school. So, where is in the practice, in the practice, uh, or the faithful church in, in the parable of the ten virgins, uh, the the unfaithful church? The bread working on the answer. So let's go. So the answer for us here, to help the brethren at the church. Peace of the Lord Jesus. Verse, verse 3 of chapter 25. Those who were foolish took the, their lamp and took no oil with them. Very well. Is this the answer? It's part of it, right? Verse 3. For sure, others may have found other verses to identify where the unfaithful church is in the parable of the ten virgins. They didn't take oil on their vessels. Any other answer? And now verse 8. Also verse 8. You can stay here, Jusso. People understand the following. Look, the parable of the virgins, the unfaithful church, and the church says is not part of Maranatha. Is this true? No, the unfaithful church is inside of church Maranatha. It, the, the church was called, understood the moment, or the call. We understand. We have a name. We have the identity. We have an identification. And now I ask you, the ones who are following the doctrine, are they being pushed to come to the church, to come to Sunday school? They can't come because they have many reasons. They come up with excuses. They only watch preach, preachings. At night, they, they want to hear lullaby. The more they hear, the more they sleep. They are sleeping. That's what happens. The the church, they were slumbering and sleeping. They only want to hear about preaching. Of course, you can hear about preaching. Of course. What is important is to bring the topic of the message of the Lord into your life. That's what matters. No. There, there are some people that say, oh, only the people that who are uh, from Maranatha are going to go to heaven. No, that's not true. No, you're saying this, but that's what we're preaching. Jesus is returning, uh, but we are not prepared. We need to go towards the groom. So we're going to speak about the rest at the end. At the end, so amen, we're ready. So here it is, another compliment, verse 8. What the foolish said on verse 8. And the foolish said, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. So this is uh, another sign of the unfaithful church. The lamps uh, are being extinguished. So they have been called. Uh, they were invited, but they were not properly prepared. Number two, they were, were desperate. They wanted help from the one who could not help them. Give us our oil. Our, our, the oil is not ours. The oil belongs to the one who has the oil, the one who baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. They heard it, the shout of the groom, but they went into the opposite direction to the order. The order was to go towards him, the groom. They actually they went out, but they went toward the darkness because they didn't go towards the groom because they were in darkness. In darkness, the Lord Jesus also speaks in the parable. He's going to say, "I do not know you." Jesus knows about revelation, so this is an, another aspect complement to identify the unfaithful church and this calls our attention also there is more the fourth reason at midnight was not time for you to buy oil because who sold the oil surely 
was also in the feast and the wedding. So in the fifth place, they had everything, but they were negligent. So the night, the light for the midnight is opposite to the lamp that is being extinguished. But the uh, faithful church that is being identified had the lamp that was going down. So this is an identification, as it was said previously, to the brethren, where is the moment of the faithful church fundamental to us to identify this at this hour, at the prophetic moment in which we are living. I also have something else. I'd like to make a compliment. Why Jesus calls this unfaithful church as the foolish church? Those are the. the please put it back here. So the reasons why the, they were foolish. Why? Because they have been invited. They were prepared. They had everything. They had all the information. They wanted help from the ones who could not help. So I'm going to go to someone that is very important. They are always speaking about beautiful things. They have a glass of water, a holy glass of water. They are not going to find it there. They heard the shout, but they went to the opposite direction. What was the shout? What was the shout? At midnight. What was the shout? Here comes the groom. Yeah, but they went towards the opposite direction. But midnight, it was not time for them to buy oil because whoever was selling oil, the owner, the feast, the one who has oil is Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was already on the wedding. The church will be raptured and the Holy Spirit will go with the church. Nobody, not, nothing will be left behind. The door is closed, there is no way out. That's what is the truth. When we're saying this, we're giving a word not to concern the visitors, the ones who are listening to us, because they may get word and never heard of this, but this is the prophetic word. I have nothing else to say. Oh, we cannot say that everything is all right. So the text says, as a year, listen to the, what the Holy Spirit is saying. So it's over, my brother. It's over. That's the thing. That's the end. So, my brother, we're going to end the study. We're going to go to the study. We're going to have every event of the church on Saturday. It's going to early dawn. We're going to bring this. Everybody will be here. We're going to also have a transmission from Manayana Seminar. And the brethren will be participating in the church. So there is no period of the first Sunday until the 24th. The Lord has revealed that uh, the Sunday schools are going to take place every weekend. We're going to have on this coming weekend also another Sunday school. So the professors, we're going to have also another class they're going to be giving. They're going to be transmitted by satellite to this church. It's the same system today is going to be repeated this coming Sunday. So we're bringing this transmission to the end. And I wish the bread and the peace of the Lord Jesus. Pastor Jesus just sent a message in Teixeira de Freitas inside the phone regarding Matthew chapter 22 when he when he speaks about And it, it meshes what is a prophetic moment. When we speak up the word of convergence, we see that the five that didn't participate in the feast, it was because they didn't have the oil in, in reserve for the vessels. And the prophetic moment is as midnight. The ones who enter to the feast, they remain in the light. The ones who were outside, they were in the outs uh, darkness outside. But now in the other parable, the individual, it was called, he accepted the invitation, 
and he was present in the feast of the wedding. He was participant of the wedding. But when the when the groom arrived there, he realized that he was lacking life in the life of man. What was missing was the garment. One was outside because a, a group was outside because they, they didn't have oil in their lamps. And the others were outside because they didn't have the proper garments. That's why in Revelation it says, every time be pay always attention to your garments and may never have oil, may be lacking oil on your head. It says in Revelation, those the one who they came from and they washed their garments and, and whitened it. What is to whiten? Is to wash with the Lord Jesus. Is to remain in sanctification, is walking with the Lord, is walking in spirit. That's why they're there. One was lacking oil, and the other was lacking the garments for the wedding of the girl, for the bride. It says she never be lacking the garments of salvation and the oil of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. Amen. And when our lamps need to be lit, Mark, that's right. This is from the Lord. The waist girded and the lamp lit. So we see on the parables and sound and trumps. First was a sound, where a third part was was if you divide it all by three. If you if you divide by three, if you take a third part, it's going to be three point three point three three three. three. If you take another part, it's going to be six 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 six, right? Six six. Six, six. The judgment upon man, the judgment upon flesh, the first, the second, and the third, and the fourth trumpet, which is we're, we're going to are not going to be here. This come is going to be an an a triple dosage. The first was the first plague was uh, upon the the. Forest, uh, other words, or the sea, and other over the fresh water. And now the fourth plague is going to come upon the third part of the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's why things are uh, worse. And the Lord's going to take the church before the fourth trumpet because the things are going to be complicated. It's going to be six, 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 six. And who is going to be able to withstand it without the presence of the Holy Spirit? So have the brethren understood? So let us finish with the song of the children. vai orar pelas nossas crianças intermediárias e adolescentes
Lord, we praise you for the blessing of seeing our children who are the children of the Lord, loving and preserving the teachings and the holy doctrine of this time. Lord, what, how many other places we could be? Escolhemos a bênção. Senhor, e o Senhor tem nos sustentado. A Tua obra tem sido nosso tudo. Esta vinha tem sido nosso sustento. Nós Te adoramos e pedimos. Mantenha-os sob a Tua mão de poder. Preservados física, emocional e espiritualmente. Para o grande dia do Senhor. Nas escolas, nas creches, nas andanças. Livramento, Senhor, de violência, perigos, acidentes. Livrando-os, ó Deus, dos ensinos pagãos e do mundo, ensinos maus. Senhor, e que eles possam estar atentos somente à voz do Teu Santo Espírito. Dá saúde aos Teus filhinhos, dá vitória nos estudos, dá inteligência, dá obediência, bom testemunho, bom comportamento, dentro e fora de casa, em nome de Jesus. Amém, Senhor. Your name is say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the, with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.